What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Power Rangers Legacy Collection build a figure the Dino Megazord from the new 2017 movie. I'm not really looking forward to this guy but having him all in hand let's actually take a little bit of a break get him all fully assembled and then we'll go on to the rest of the figure and we'll see how he actually turned out because as you saw with my other reviews, I'm really not excited about this, but maybe having him combined will change my mind. So let's take a little break, get him put together, and then we'll go on with the rest of his review. So sit tight, everyone. And here we have the Megazord fully assembled. And I have to say, after putting him together, I'm actually a little bit more fond of him. Uh, I really wasn't too excited about the individual pieces because he was lacking some articulation, but the way they actually constructed him kind of does make up for his missing articulation i'll go on to that in a little bit but overall here we do have the megazord in the pack or uh, fully assembled let's take a good 360 of him my i think my main problem with him is probably the exact same issue that we've had with all the other legacy movie rangers and it's like me beating a dead horse at this point and that's paint. He's missing a lot of paint apps and you know a little bit of wash goes a long way and I think that this figure could use a little bit of paint wash just to bring out some of the details in him because as it stands I honestly think he's the most detailed figure out of the entire bunch and like I said as I have him built here I am actually starting to like him more this was actually one figure that I was really ready to like just tear apart and say it's not worth it, but having him in hand, I'm actually eating my words. He is actually a really nice figure. I keep saying he will eat. You know, it's a bunch of dinosaurs put together and made a human robot. That's the best way I can word it. He does have a, some size to him, so let's actually get the Megazord pose back there, and we'll bring out the Red Ranger for comparison. And here we have the Red Ranger with him, and as you can see, the Megazord does have some height on him. He's about, eh, I want to say, maybe an inch and a half taller than the Red Ranger. But overall, really still a good-looking figure. I was actually expecting him to be smaller. Now, he's not the perfect figure by any stretch of the imagination. He still does have some issues, and let's actually go on to his details before we move on to his articulation, where I think he suffers the most. Moving the camera all the way up to the head. Giving credit where credit is due, I will say the effect that they put on the face of the Megazord is really stunning. I do like how they have this blue and the purples looks really nice the paint is spot on like there's hardly any paint blemishes on and just a really nice job in making this figure stand out and then you can see right here the blue has that same blue and purple effect it's it's really awesome how they did that and having it in the light you can see exactly how nice that is Kind of wish they did this with all the Power Rangers now. I think I'm a little spoiled for the Megazord now. You can see some darker paints here. Again, all that really, really beautiful detail on the Megazord. And even on the back, it is so detailed. You know, I'm really looking forward to see how this thing looks in the movie. Because I don't think any of the figures do it justice yet. And then we can go on to show the rest of it. Like I said, just details everywhere. I kind of wish that it had more details, more paint, just to bring out all these details. Because from a distance, this will get lost in translation. And that's actually a shame. But still, great job on Bandai's part. You can see even the dark blues. The only thing I don't see is the Mastodon here. I can kind of tell that the feet are supposed to be the triceratops, the saber-toothed tigers right here in the torso, the arms are the T-Rex, or the arms and the torso are the T-Rex, and then the head and the wings are the pterodactyl, but I don't see much of the mastodon in here, like I don't see any black paint. 
might be my imagination, but I don't see any. But anyway, let's actually get the Dino Megazord pose in the back so we can actually go on to its articulation. And the Dino Megazord, like I said, suffers from some loss in articulation, and we're going to point that out right now. The head is on a swivel joint, so you can only turn the head left and right. There's no up and down, no side to side, actually. No, there is no side to side. Arms go out to about that far, which is not the greatest range. They would do a full 360, but they, the wings do kind of get in the way. And you can pop the arm off if you're not careful. Now, it doesn't have a traditional bicep swivel, but it does have movement. You can see that's actually something we see on import figures where they put the bicep swivel up here in the shoulder. So that's really impressive. I didn't think they would actually do that because we can bring the arm across now where I thought it was just going to be up and down movement. But we do have a single hinge in the elbow, nothing in the wrist, nothing in the torso. Let's go out to about that far. They go forward, they go back, and then they don't go out too far. And just like with the elbows, we do get a slight thigh swivel. Again, normally see this on import figures, but surprisingly they actually gave it to us on this figure, so that's actually pretty cool. Single joint in the knee, and then we have swivel at the feet. At the feet. Uh, no kind of rock or no hinge, it's just a swivel joint, so that's where this figure does kind of suffer in the articulation department, and as I was messing with it, that was probably my biggest concern, is that the articulation isn't all there, but nonetheless, it is still a really nice figure. What I'm going to do now is get it posed and move on to my final thoughts, and then we'll go on to the rest of the figure, so sit tight, everyone. So here we have the Megazord pose for my final thoughts, and overall, I think it's a really nice-looking figure. I'm actually eating my words on it. As far as its construction goes, it could use a little bit of... It could use more articulation, and as far as paint goes, it can use a lot more paint. But as it stands for a throwaway, for a throw-in figure, I think it does a really good job. Especially because Bandai really hasn't been making these six-inch figures for too long, and I'm really glad that we at least got a really decent six-inch Megazord here. I kind of wish that we got Goldar instead, or maybe even Rita. Uh, maybe giving us a seventh figure. But as as it stands, I really do like this Megazord. I'm, again, I'm eating my words. I didn't think the Megazord would be this nice. Kind of glad I have it all together now. So it is a really nice figure, and it does leave a little to be desired with the articulation, but it's still a pretty good figure, and it gets my seal of approval. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, like it, leave a comment, tell me what you think of the Dino Megazord. Do you think I was being too harsh on it? I think my praise for it is well received. Granted, it's not the perfect figure. And if you want to go check out all my other action figure reviews, please do. My Power Rangers videos are also up, as well as all my WWE import, whatever you guys are looking for. If it's If I like it and you guys like it, it's probably going to be up on my channel. And until next time, guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000 saying I'll see you later and take care, everyone. My dreams are nightmares. How can I sleep? You got the gun against me. It won't